guys, welcome. This is CP Cards and Dice. I'm doing a quick tutorial on color coding your score sheet. I just finished the game with Payoff Pitch Baseball. It was uh, the New York Mets, the 1969 Mets, beating the Expos by a score of 5-1. to one. What I do with these scorecards is um, I basically color code them just to, um, I don't know, bring them to life, colorize an older game, focus on the game, on different at-bats and what happened. So I'm going to start with red. I'm going to start with my strikeouts. It was Kuzman versus Robertson. So Robertson started out strong, struck out a couple of Mets batters. By the third inning, he had three. Uh, in the fourth, he got another strikeout, but he also gave a run. In the fifth, had two men on, got out of trouble. Struck out his fifth man of the game. Then in the sixth, really struggled and got pulled for McGinn, who struck out Jones. Later in the eighth, McGinn struck out another Met. Mets were up 5-1 to one at this point. In the ninth, they brought in Dick Raditz, and uh, he struck out the side with a hit and a walk sandwiched in between. So that was interesting. Now, for Kuzman, he struck out one in the second, another one in the third. In the fifth, he struck out a couple. I gave him four on the day. And it wasn't until the eighth that he struck out a couple more, five and six. Got stronger as the game progressed and struck out a couple more in the ninth. Jerry Kuzman, who went to complete game, got the victory. Kuzman improved his record to nine and five. All right, then I'm going to go into uh, the hits. Let's look at the hits. Right. So Kuzman, we can write that in. Strike out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, eight. Excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Kuzman struck out eight batters. Let's do the hits. Kuzman gave up a double in the first. Then a single in the fifth to Herrera. A double to Brandt. A single and a home run in the, top, in the bottom of the sixth. In the seventh, another hit. And that was it for the ballgame. We had one, two, three, four, five, six hits for Kuzman. And let's look at the hits that uh, the Expos gave up. Green. Green. That was a walk, a hit, hit here. Another hit here. Another hit here. Big home run, three-run home run by Tommy Agee in the top of the sixth inning to blow open the game. Put the Mets up. It was four straight hits, and then he got pulled, and then a hit in the ninth. So that's going to be uh, total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hits total for the Mets. Now let's do walks. Yellow. Now this you do when you have time, and just to break up. Don't want to go from game to game, rushing through every game. I do that sometimes. Lately, I've just been, hey, let's enjoy the game you play. Let's take some time on it. I have a lot of time. It's one thing I can't complain about not having is time. So that's going to be four walks. Three by the starter, by Robertson. And it was McGinn and then Raditz. And Raditz walked one. Uh, strikeouts. We didn't do the strikeouts. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. No, five. Five by Robertson. One and three. All right. And the hits came one there. Basically one here and nine there. 
and none there. And it was five and a third. 5.1. And then it was 2.2 .2 and one inning for Rabbits. All the runs scored off of Robertson, five earned runs. Home runs, big home run allowed by two AG by Robertson. None there, none there. No hit by pitch, no wild pitch in this game. And the loss goes there. All right, the next thing we're going to do is ground balls. We're going to do them in like a light brown color. It's a fielder's choice, so that's considered a ground ball. 6-3. Six three again. Two more ground balls in the top of the eighth. And that's it. Down in Montreal, it's gonna be three ground balls in that first inning, another two in the second inning. Another one in the fourth. One right here. Fielder's choice. Double play. Feel this choice right there. Ground ball to third. And another one to third. There you go. So we took care of all the – now the fly balls are going to be in blue. A couple of fly balls induced by the Montreal Expo pitchers in the first and second. Another pop-up. Fly ball to right, the fly ball there, another one there. So a bunch of fly balls. That's three fly balls here. The whole inning was fly balls. That's going to be it. But we miss. Ah, we got to do that down here. Fly ball and a pop up. Those are fly outs. Line drive and a fly out. Fly out to the right fielder. Two flyouts in inning number seven. And that's going to be it. So that's how I do it. It's kind of fun. It's easy to read, right? Uh, Kuzman went nine. Gave up six hits, one run, one earned run. He walked none. Struck out eight. Allowed one home run, no hit by pitch, no walks. Won the game. And there was no errors. I don't see any errors. It's a pretty simple game, pretty fast. Mets improved their record to 51 and 38, while the Montreal Expos dropped to 49 and 44. And that's it. That is how I color code my uh, my score sheet. It's just to add a dimension, another dimension to the experience of tabletop gaming. I, I don't always do a score sheet. But with PC Replay, you can actually print out the score sheets. You don't have to write all this information in. It does give the information for replay. The reason I don't use more replay when I play is that uh, I'm not. there's a question in my mind as to how easy it is to, to get a hold of the fringe player cards. And I don't like when I print them out and they're a different size than all the other cards. That's something that irks me and gets on my nerves. I'd like them to be the same size. And I don't know that they are the same size, and I don't know that you can get all the fringe players. That's something that is kind of like a pet peeve with me. So I have to mention that. So that's, but it's a great game. Otherwise, I mean, play, uh, play the playing through the game is it's, the mechanics are outstanding. I mean, there's no no nothing wrong with the game itself. It's just the fact that I don't know if I can. So I really limit playing games that I know I can't get all the players for. I just limit those. When I can, I you know fully invest in the game and buy a lot of their stuff. So it's really about hey, do you want to spend the time making you know those extra fringe players for guys like me? Maybe there's 20 guys, 30 guys, 40 guys. They're all going to buy more of your seasons, more of your stuff. If that's guaranteed that I'm going to get them in the right size, you know, um, and I'm going to get them, I'm going to get all my fringe players. I don't know. That's up to you to decide whether you want to make that investment or not because it's your company, not mine. I can only tell you what I want. And one thing with Payoff Pitch Baseball is it has the best top quality cards. Not only that, it gives you every single player that you can order. And it comes in the same type of high quality card stock as your teams. So there, there's no difference. Everything's in line. I love that about uh, 
pay off pitch baseball. Um, and that's it. So I just want to do a quick video on color coding. So you can do this. You can try it. You can. Uh, I'm, I'm messing with doing different um, box scores, kind of annotating it in a different way. I started doing that. I see other guys do it. And I said, let me try this. Let me try that. Um, I've started doing the little sticks because I can fit more. I, I have more space in the scorecard. Like, look at my singles now. My singles are tiny. Home runs, I usually put a circle around. I don't know why, just to kind of uh, enhance them. But my singles are really tiny. It's a little stick that only comes in the bottom left-hand corner for a single, two sticks in the upper right-hand corner, and then three for the upper left-hand corner if it's a triple and a home run goes in the center right in the middle um, when it's a home run. And I just do it that way. Um, so I started doing this because I saw another guy doing it. L listen, I, I'm not going to be dishonest. I'm going to tell you that I will see what other guys do. And I say, hey, I'd like to try that. And then I kind of make it my own sometimes. And other times I just keep it the way they do it. You know, but I don't want to pretend that I, I make up anything. You know, no, I, I learn from you guys and I try different things. And sometimes I create my own solutions to things. And, uh, and sometimes they work for other people. Sometimes they don't. It doesn't matter to me. It's okay. It's either way. Now, by the way, I use the fast action cards when I play payoff pitch. I always use the fast action cards. I only have to look up, look at the chart one time. Well, no, twice. Once with the uh, infield in result and another time with a stolen base issue that I couldn't remember. So twice in nine innings is really, really good. That's what I love about this set with the fast action cards. It's a must-have. Uh, you must use that. And that's going to be it. I think I dragged this out pretty long. Uh, it's a 12-minute little mini uh, tutorial on color coding. Now, you could do other things. There's other fun things you could do. Like you could take these and, and go to the green and go like around with a, with a marker. You may want to do that. That's another thing that you can do. So those are all the hits. Just kind of stress the hits. I'll show you how that looks. Just a bunch of hits here, so I do that, do that. Um, see how that looks? So some guys want to do that. I've done that sometimes when I have a little extra time. You know, it just depends on how much time you want to put in to it. I, you know, I don't always do it. I do it sometimes. So that's kind of makes the, the hit stand out a little bit more. And that, that's about it. So this is CP Cards and Dice. So who had a good game? I can immediately see that there's greens over here for uh, AG had a couple of greens. Boswell had a couple of greens. Who else? Uh, and uh, Weiss had a couple of greens. So there's at least three players with two hits each. Weiss had a single, two singles. And uh, Boswell had two singles and two stolen bases. That's interesting. Which I don't think I gave him credit for. <laughs> In my, in my, uh, I don't think I gave him credit for those stolen bases. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Oh, wait, I did. Oh, I'm good. I did give him credit for two stolen bases. Okay, great. That's why I have to do this at the same time, because if I don't do the, the PC scorecard at the same time, I sometimes go back and forget the things. But yeah, two stolen bases, and that, that was his fifth. He's got five stolen bases so far. Had seven in the whole season. So anyway, this is CP Cards and Dice saying thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the chat. Uh, keep an eye out um, you know, for my next video. I will play another game using Payoff Pitch Baseball uh, of my 69 Mets replay. It's a blast. Uh, Mets are in first place right now. And ever since they picked up um, the first baseman, Clendenin, and then Shamsky called up Shamsky from the minors, their offense really got a boost, a major boost, and they started winning games. I, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if they've, you know, they, they won f uh, 30 out of 45 games since they brought up those guys. They really turned it around when before that they were struggling and hovering around 500. But those two guys made a big difference in my season. So anyway, this is CP Cards and Dice, and thanks for hanging out. This is my 15 minutes is up. My 15 minutes of fame is over. It's complete. Who is that? William. William. Welcome, my brother. Uh, you know what? I don't do the coloring while playing the game, but I have stopped. Like after – when I do take little mini breaks, like if there's things going on in my life, I'll, I'll just play three innings, and then I'll stop at the top of the fourth 
And then sometimes I come back and I say, oh, let me color these in. So, but I don't usually do that, but it doesn't mean that I'll never do that or that I never will do that. It's just that I generally don't do that. I kind of do it at the end, but that would be interesting to do. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. There's no absolute rules, you know, um, to our hobby. It's just uh, playing stuff that we play when we were kids and keeping that, that youthfulness uh, alive, that nostalgia alive, that the world, it, I kind of go back in time. That's why I play actual replays a lot. And I look at, I read the history of the time of the era. It connects me to what I was doing, where I was at that time in my life, my parents, my house, my friends, my school. You know, that's when I go back and I play my 76 Yankee inside pitch, which I will get back to that this week. Uh, that reminds me of what I was doing. Uh, I remember my father, rest in peace, he woke me up when Chris Chambliss hit the, the walk-off against Mark Littell in that 76 playoff game to send the Yankees to the World Series. And the field was mobbed with fans. I remember he woke me up. I was in a deep sleep. And he said, get up, get up. you got to see this. Come on. And he took me to this little black and white TV that, uh, that we had, a 13-inch black and white TV, you know, where that ha had hangers as antennas. And, uh, and, and there I was watching Chris Chambliss run around the bases, you know, and, and, and it was an exciting time. And I remember my – and that brings my dad back to life, you know. So anytime I see Chris Chambliss, I remember my father. And uh, anyway, that's CP Cards and Dice. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I will see you again soon.